Welcome back to Vintage Henshin On Location, our travelogue series where we chronicle our trips to tokusatsu-related events. Today, we're talking about a convention that I have been sleeping on for decades. A mistake that I finally rectified. G-Fest. Without hyperbole, it is one of the biggest kaiju-focused tokusatsu events of its kind in the country. It's been going on for years. It's been the site of several exclusive indie tokusatsu film premieres and guest appearances. There are generations of fans whose friendships, and in some cases marriages, began at G-Fest. It's got a lineage. And for whatever reason, my dumb face never went. I think it was largely because while Godzilla was responsible for bringing me to the party, I just never considered myself a diehard kaiju fan, which is saying something. I mean, I have a near perfect run of G-Fan from 1996, and I mean, I stopped everything to watch a cam copy of Godzilla vs. Destroyer when I was younger. It was always there, but it was never a priority. And even as I got older and I became more aware of the event, it just never happened, whether through schedule clashes or other things that just kept me away. Which brings us to this year. After a very chaotic final spurt on the Ultraman Day Ultrathon production, and with a bunch of other stuff going on, I felt like I needed an escape. On a whim, G-Fest sounded like a really good idea to just go for a day. On top of just wanting a bit of a mini vacation, well, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be in the Midwest. It would just make sense to go at least once, right? While I was kind of hemming and hawing over it, Alley in Arms and Kaiju for Hipsters author Kevin Derendorf actually approached me about being on his G-Fest panel, a whole look into the world of late night tokusatsu. And that's something that, well, to pull back the curtain a little bit, I'm looking at covering in season two of Vintage Tension, so at the very least, that would be a nice foot in the door towards the research. And then sometime after that, I got to talk to my friend Carlos from the Heroes 3 podcast. Came up in conversation out of the blue that his wife had just learned of the convention this year and she had expressed interest in going to G-Fest. After more organizing and more talking, everything just kind of lined up. So it was happening. I was really going to pull the trigger on my first ever G-Fest. And as I observed on the way back that day, it was easily the best decision I've made all year. You know that feeling you get when you go to your first ever anime convention or your first ever sci-fi convention? Just that feeling of wonder when you set foot and you realize you are among your own kind? For the first time in years, I felt that. Aside from some slight registration hiccups due to terrible reception, stay classy Hyatt Regency O'Hare, I didn't have any problems getting into the con. It was just fun for the moment I got my badge to the first glimpses of the dealer's room, which, holy hell, folks. The place was wall-to-wall -wall with kaiju shirts, memorabilia, and sofa B figures. I mean, they were everywhere. By Sunday, it was just buy one, get one. They were just throwing them at you, basically. But on top of that, you had no idea what exactly you would ever stumble upon. It was like a literal treasure hunt. You even had Japanese companies like M1 and Marsan selling exclusives. It was pretty wild. I had to really stop myself from going on an insane shopping spree. Thankfully enough, the unbridled rage of Vintage Henshin supporter Matt Frank kept me in check. Stepping out of the dealer's room, there was so much to do. You had the panels that were chock full of amazing educational content, including the panel that Kevin and I did, not to toot our own horns or anything, we had a pretty good turnout. There was also a whole model area where you had dioramas and scratch-built pieces that were set for competition. Just the creativity on display there was just staggering. You had the whole arcade, a bunch of setups for Dawn of the Monsters, as well as Gigabash, and a couple other classic Godzilla games, but you had a bunch of rare arcade cabinets, so some of which you might have seen showcased on Monster Island Buddies, so it was a little weird seeing them in person. But aside all the rarities, I was just happy to get my hands on an Ultra X weapons cabinet again. It's a top-down shooter, kind of like 1941, but all Ultraman focused, and you're playing as mechs from the various support teams. Basically, it's a game made for me. I'm hoping that someday it gets liberated for the Arcade Archive series. 
There was also a room hosted by Dojo Studios, which had them producing a tokusatsu film the entire weekend, right down to air cannons and model cities. It was pretty fun to walk in and just catch the progress from time to time. But my favorite part of G-Fest, and honestly, this should be part of the sales pitch for anybody wanting to go, the video rooms, and specifically, the film festival. Like, there are some real gems in there, such as the German 8mm print of Godzilla vs. Mechagodzilla that we sort of walked into. And then you get to the main festival video rooms, which you could pop into at any point during the weekend. You had a chance of catching a really random and exclusive North American or even just G-Fest premiere. Some of which actually have been featured here on Vintage Henshin in our Hero and Indie Showcase. So we're talking stuff like Yuki Kurosu's Ibarra, Case of Extra, and Yuzo, the biggest Battle in Tokyo, the latter of which I really regret missing. I've been following it for a while, and it looks like it's going to be a hell of a thing. Speaking of regret, there was also Hundreds of Beavers. That is the title of the movie, and it looks so delightful, and I've heard nothing but good things, and I missed it. Ugh. The thing that I did manage to catch without fail, for the most part, was the short film showcase on Sunday. There were some fun encores like the great actress Reiko Inui and the green giant Asanzuki, but the standouts for me amongst the bunch were The Man in the Green Suit, which is a very topical comedy romp in which a kaiju suit actor basically goes on a rampage, and Great Monster Bugon, also featured in our 2022 Year in Indie Showcase, which landed its first ever international premiere. Coming with the film was its director, the one and only, Kyo Takataguchi, director of Ultraman Blazar. I really can't talk about the movie without spoiling the bejesus out of it. If there's an opportunity to see it in your neck of the woods, I suggest taking the time and making that happen. It got some of the biggest laughs of the short film showcase, and it left me with a dumb smile on my face by the end. Now, apparently while well, Bugon is currently only being shown in Japan, specifically in the Hot Springs town that it's advertising, Taguchi did mention plans to get the film on Blu-ray and over to G-Fest. Fingers crossed we get some kind of encore. And speaking of encores, like I said in the beginning, the plan had been for me to go to G-Fest for one day only with Carlos and his wife. We talked on the way home about all the stuff that would be happening on Sunday. Some really great opportunities for Carlos and the Bugon screening, which sounded like a really good time. I was asked simply, want to go back on Sunday? And of course, I said yes. I totally get it now. I, I get why G-Fest is such an institution amongst kaiju fans. Not just because of my reclaimed feelings of wonder, but the camaraderie that often gets taken for granted to the point of cliche these days at other conventions. For me, it was really reinvigorating. You have to understand, it's been a rough couple of months in the online Tuxatsi fandom with a lot of negativity, and recently I even experienced my own bit of harassment. So I was low-key jaded going into G-Fest this year, but for two days, I was able to just be a fan again without worrying about any sort of negativity in the wings. It felt amazing, and I got to be happy about it. All in all, G-Fest was just some kind of magic, and I was a little sad that the spell eventually had to end. But there's always next year, and whether or not I'm in the Midwest by then, yeah, let's do this again. <laughs>